Mr. Root, you are now recognized for five minutes. Chairman uh, Chavez, Ranking Member Cummins, and respected members of House Committee and Oversight Government, my name is Scott Root, and I thank you for the opportunity to be the voice of my murdered daughter, Sarah Ray Ann Root, murdered on Sunday, January 31st at approximately 2 a.m. by a drunk driver and illegal immigrant Edwin Mejia. Less than 24 hours, Sarah walked with a 4.0 grade point average at ba uh, Bachelor's in Criminal Investigations from Bellevue University. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Officer Bose, Rizzo, Adam and Don Turnbull, and Swanson from the Omaha Police Department. Uh, we would also like to thank Congressman and staff Steve King, Robert Goodley, also take Senators uh, Ernst, Fisher, Grassley, Sass, Sessions, and the doctors and nurses at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. As a 30-year member of the Steam Fitters Local 464, it is ironic that I find myself thanking a Republican House and a Senate member who reached out to us within weeks of Sarah's death. My ex-wife were not contacted by any Democrats or ICE until April 22nd after I learned I would testify and the days and 82 days after my daughter was murdered. They were told ICE had a victims unit and they would be reaching out. I am an Army veteran. I firmed, served with the 1st Cav. My father was a World War II medic and was a recipient of the Purple Heart, Silver Star, and the French Medal Claude de Guerre. I don't want to share this to talk about ourselves, rather to point out that the Root family has served their country when called upon. Now they are asking for your help in getting answers and justice. My mother and sister legally immigrated to the United States after World War II and become, to become American citizens. In my opinion, the Obama administration with open borders policy has changed us. We no longer for ask for immigrants to assimilate to our way of life, whether schools, governments are required to accommodate to their needs of their country. My mother and sister took pride in becoming Americans and learning the language and culture by allowing illegal immigrants to take custody of illegal immigrants with no controls in place for a person like Edwin Mejia, the man who killed my, brother, my daughter, were to break our laws. Sarah was a daughter, sister, granddaughter, cousin, niece, and a friend. She was bright, smart, loving, caring, respectful, and strong. Like her brother and mom, she stood up for her beliefs. My son Scott lost his best friend, confidant, when, I was, when Sarah died. Her mother lost her best friend. Daughter and fellow Kansas City's chief, I'd like to take, uh, take this opportunity to walk my daughter down the aisle on her wedding day and spoil her uh, grandchildren she wanted. She loved to fish, in her, and this year she wanted to try deer hunting. In the early morning of January 31st, I received no call a parent should ever have to change. Uh, my family was summoned to the hospital at approximately 4 a.m. I thought we had to deal with a broken leg or a broken arm. I didn't get, dare think the worst. Uh, I was awaiting something that no father should have to go through. That was identify their child. Her spinal cord was snapped, her skull fractured in two places, her face was swollen and beyond recognition. We identified her by her tattoo on a rib cage, live, laugh, love, and a crucifix. The neurosurgeon said on a scale from 1 to 10 that her chance for recovery was zero. No parent should have to deal with that, especially when the situation could have been prevented if the laws have been followed to enforce. Sarah was an organ donor. Her mother and I kept her on life support three days um, to allow organ recipients and their doctors to prepare themselves for harvesting. Uh, Sarah, through her unselfish act, was able to save uh, six individuals. She all help, also helped five, four to five dozen more through don donation of tissue and tendons bones. Since the accident, I learned Edwin had been apprehended in Arizona at 16-year-old minor, yet our government allowed him to be turned over to his brother, another illegal immigrant. Due to pressure being applied to the, mention, to the mentioned congressman centers, uh, Edwin is now on the ICE top 10 most wanted list. This is ironic on the web page it says, unlawful, illegal. When apprehended in Arizona, he was released to another illegal. <clears throat> When the Omaha police approached ICE five times requesting a tainer, detainer, we were reached each time with unlawful, illegal. Edwin was released four days in jail and his brother posted 10 percent of $50,000, which is $5,000. It cost more to bury my daughter than her family and friends have yet been given a death sentence and a denial of her love, companionship. My family understands that her questions have not been answered, but I would like to go on for record the following. 
At a local level, my friends are collecting signatures against Jeffrey Marcuso to remove him from the bench. Uh, he failed to show up for minor traffic infa infractions and presented a flight risk. Uh, our question at the Federal level, who is accountable? Sarah Sedania, Jed Johnson, Barack Obama, Harry Truman used to say, the buck stops here. This is not only a case of administration. Marcuse recently sent bail for another illegal immigrant accused of uh, vehicle homicide in Omaha, $2 million for the local. I set a detainer on him. Congressman Goodlay, Senator Grassley, and a joint letter to Jed Johnson demanding answers for our case. The Senator, has, Senator Sass has demanded answers from Sarah Saldana. If they cannot get answers from a family from Iowa, uh, from Iowa, sorry, held accountable, uh, yeah, uh, sorry. Has anyone been held accountable for the local level? It's been two and a half months since the Senators and Congressmen have asked answers from ICE. When can we expect to get the answers? The Omaha Police Department did their jobs. Uh, how is it is that illegal brother was able to bail him out and disappeared? Do I get a choice which laws to follow? If not, which does an unlawful or legal immigrant mean? Sarah's family and friends are punished. Would officials of ICE Edwin's crime uh, and in the criteria for level, I would like, would someone please explain to me how a daughter had a spinal cord and a skull fractured in 2,000 places by a 6,000 pound pickup with 1,000 pounds of roofing equipment uh, traveling at 70 to 80 miles per hour in an underage uh, person three, per, uh, three times over the legal limit, drag racing from Honduras, not violent? Explain that to me. What information do we have on Edwin's family and friends? Who owned the vehicle that Edwin was driving that killed my daughter? I understand it's another illegal from Wichita, Kansas. He was driving the streets with Omaha with no driver's license, no registration, no insurance. He did not show up for obligations for minor uh, traffic violations. It was assumed he would show up for motor vehicle homicide. On attention level, has a red pool notice been issued? Are those steps in place? Uh, does he have a cellular card? Uh, what is being done in the country of Honduras? Edwin was apprehended in Arizona. Was a file created? If so, what information has been communicated? If the Obama administration position on this is not to enforce immigration law, what is the purpose of ICE and our tax dollars being wasted? The only incentive to capture him is $5,000 reward through the Omaha Crime Stoppers. What other tools and means are available to the national law enforcement and uh, people in Honduras, Mexico, or the United States to turn Edwin to other authorities. In my closing, my family and friends will not stop until people at the local and federal level are held accountable to her killer and brought to just justice. When Edwin is caught, he will face a 20-year prison sentence and attend with good behavior. But my family is facing a sentence without her. Her sentence is unavoidable and would have occurred if the failed policies of the Obama administration and the laws that allowed be ignored in an incompetent local judicial system. This was the last time I saw Sarah was January 31st. She graduated from Bellevue University. Now I carry a cross on my heart with a crucifix around my neck. I want to leave you with a personal story. When Sarah was young, she had a patch of hair on her back. I would tease her by calling her monkey girl. She hated it, but she knew it came from a father's love. I love you forever, monkey girl. Thank you for this opportunity to share Sarah's story and my family's story. Scott Root. Mr. Root, thank you. Thank you for your personal service to this country and, and uh, for the strength to, to be able to offer that statement and be here today. And uh, God bless you. Uh, thank you. Between uh, yourself and Ms. Hartling, um, thank, you. thank you for sharing your stories. Um,